Adobe has always been the one and only, the mainstream software and the norm for absolute professionals. So why would I consider slowly shifting away from Adobe and using other alternative softwares? And does that make me less of a professional? Let's talk. Later on, I will give you alternatives to each and every Adobe software I use and tell you all the ups and downs of each and every software. But before, let's talk why am I slowly trying to depend less and less on Adobe. You can skip the video to here if you want to see the software directly. I'm going to try to cover everything quickly for the sake of this video not being a titanic movie. So I suggest you subscribe because soon I'll be doing a video on each and every software that I use as Adobe alternative and get in depth on each and every software. Now before I even complain about Adobe, I do want to mention that these software, Adobe softwares are bleeding edge professional tools. Most people, even I, are just chained into using these softwares. I'm pretty sure most professionals out there still use Adobe as their main software. That means no other software can surpass what Adobe can offer as a complete package. For now. But not everything is about power and capability. So that's where Adobe falls painfully short. So much so that it might cost them soon from being the industry leading softwares. So the main reason I absolutely hate Adobe and I'm trying to use alternatives are the following. One, and that's usability and optimizations. The problem with Adobe comes at its usability and functionality. Adobe has always been known as a heavy software, frankly not well optimized always in need of pure power and professional hardware. Using Adobe, even on a high-end desktop like PCs, Windows, and Macs, seem to suffer as well. And the performance improvements are not very noticeable. And not to mention that their record of not responding messages hitting you every single day. Now, despite Adobe softwares being very capable softwares, having a software that does not move and work properly is a deal breaker for some. So that's my main problem I have with Adobe. They're just not fluid enough and the overall experience falls short. Now let's be honest, not all Adobe products are badly optimized. Applications on tablets, iPads, Android tablets, and Android devices run surprisingly well compared to their desktop predecessors. And that makes me hypothesize that Adobe apps on Mac and Windows are just built on top of a very ancient program. And trying to fix that problem is trying to put a small band-aid on a huge hole. No matter what Adobe does, it's still not enough. Now to give you an example of optimized apps from Adobe, not the ones on the tablet, the ones on Windows and Macs are, for example, Adobe XD. Adobe XD runs on a new software, so that gives the advantage of not running these ancient codes and having a modern and well-optimized code from Adobe. Another example is the Adobe Lightroom CC, not the classic one, the new one. It also runs surprisingly well compared to the classic, heavy, old code version. Second, Adobe has to understand that not everybody can pay what they ask for for every single month. At least in my case, paying 60 bucks for a full month is crazy high, especially when I'm not using Adobe Creative Cloud at its fullest potential. I also hate that you have a separate app, Adobe Creative Cloud, installed on my computer running 24 hours a day in the background just to install a single software on my device. As if the badly optimized software that they had wasn't enough. Come on Adobe. So I will give you the alternatives I use to replace Adobe as a professional. But these softwares come at a cost of not being the leading industry softwares. Not having all the plugins that you need, not having all the support that you might want. But the apps that I will mention are greatly well optimized and it will improve the productivity immensely. So let's start with the Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign combo alternative. Now this alternative that I will mention is absolutely amazing, but there might be some deal breakers that I will mention later on. And that's Serif Affinity. 
Now let's start with all the good that these softwares can offer. Well, number one, obviously, is speed and optimizations. I cannot stress this enough. These apps run absolutely smoothly, like butter. Unlike Adobe that runs quite badly compared to Serif Affinity softwares, they can handle complex stuff like blur, hundreds of layers of objects without a problem. You can feel that these softwares are very, very well optimized. It reduces all the unnecessary resolution when you're zooming in and out so things work properly without killing the hell out of your RAM. Second thing I like about these softwares that they're very similar in terms of interface to Adobe Photoshop InDesign Illustrator. So that means getting used to these softwares might not be a big deal. With a few adjustments, you'll probably be able to edit on these softwares without a problem. On top of that, these softwares offer real compatibility between each other, not like the Adobe ones. Now, Adobe ones have different softwares that you can open, work, and close, and open another one. But with these softwares, you have a single app, for example, Affinity Publisher. I can open Affinity Publisher in Design Alternative with a single click, and I'm in Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Publisher. It's already open to cut backgrounds, design illustrations, and put effects that I might not be able to do solely with Affinity Publisher. And all this in one software. Holy moly! Where were you, Affinity, when I was suffering with opening up and closing up different softwares every time I have to do something? Plus, Affinity softwares are quite cheap, and for a single pay, you'll get them forever, at least that specific version. Now, let's jump to video editing, animations, and etc. etc. The premier alternative. So, I mainly use three different alternatives Final Cut Pro X and Apple Motion for Mac users and DaVinci Resolve for Windows users. Now, starting with Final Cut Pro X, this software is amazing. Point. If you want a quick, simple way of editing and a very responsive way, Final Cut Pro X is incredible. It handles some unimaginable stuff for a simple computer. It also offers amazing flexibility and professional tools on top of plugins, generators, and transitions. At a single price, you're off to go. You can create very professional videos with Final Cut Pro X, no doubt. DaVinci Resolve is also an amazing alternative. Although not as fast as Final Cut Pro X, it's still very well optimized and immensely faster than Premiere in this case. It is also extremely fast and a lot more capable than Final Cut Pro. And it's the leading industry color grading software, hands down, much better than Premiere in most cases, if not all, if you are willing to sacrifice other Adobe apps too and their ecosystem. Plus, DaVinci Resolve is absolutely free. They have a free version that includes all the professional tools that you might need. For motion stuff, at least for Mac users, we have Apple Motion. And Apple Motion is very underrated. For me, as an uh, average animator, not a professional one, I can do all my animations for my designs perfectly on Apple Motion without having any issues. And of course, not to mention that it's amazing speed for proving any animations and awesome compatibility with its brother, Final Cut Pro X. It is like incomparable to After Effects in terms of optimizations. It can also do complex stuff in some cases. Although it's immensely faster than After Effects, very heavy project, motion might just lose a bit of its speed. So take that into account. Now the downsides are, in general, none of these are leading industry softwares. For now, for some, workflows like After Effects and Premiere Combo is a deal breaker for some. You might also find more plugins for Premiere and After Effects than any other software. Especially for Apple Motion, it's very, very limited in terms of tutorials, plugins, and so on. And finally, we get to photo editing. Apart from Photoshop, we have Adobe Lightroom. So I'm gonna be replacing Adobe Lightroom with Capture One. Although still being a bit expensive, Capture One offers amazing capabilities and you can say whatever you want, but for me, 
Capture One offers better results and more professional ones compared to Lightroom. It just handles RAW files, especially my Fujifilm RAW files, immensely better than Lightroom. You might not see the difference, but if you're nitpicking and just need the best perfect results, Capture One does offer that. It has all you need from Adobe Lightroom and runs much faster than my Add Adobe app I have used. Very light and very quick while offering more professional results. I also have to mention that Adobe Lightroom CC, the new one, not the classic one, is also a good alternative for classic heavy softwares like Adobe Lightroom Classic. Although Capture One being better than Adobe Lightroom in my case, it has a big disadvantage. The big downside are the lack of preset that most professionals offer for Adobe Lightroom. This can be a deal breaker, especially for me as well, if I'm using a lot of presets from other professionals that I love. So you might not have all those presets and that's why I still use Adobe Lightroom CC on my tablet at least. Another honorable mention is Pixelmator Pro. I have not used this app and might even try it right now. But as what I saw online, it's extremely cheap and it will offer you decently professional editing and help you out with a lot of stuff using AI and machine learning. And that helps you immensely getting started with photo editing instead of relying on Photoshop or Affinity Photo that are a lot more complex and manual. So let's do a recap. Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, Affinity Photo, Capture One for photo editing, Final Cut Pro X, Apple Motion, and DaVinci Resolve. You can also use Pixelmator Pro as I mentioned as a honorable mention. So in the end, you come to this question. Can I replace Adobe 100% with alternative applications? And the answer is yes and no, kinda. Depends on your use case. I say kinda for now because of the disadvantages that I mentioned before, but slowly Adobe is losing its top spot and other softwares are competing immensely in offering not only better optimized apps, but generally a better experience. For me, I value immensely optimizations, speed, and user interface, and Adobe lacks in that perspective. Believe me, using these softwares will boost your productivity. Okay, that's it for today. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you dislike it, please let me know why in the comments down below. Stay tuned for the in-depth videos for each and every software and please subscribe to be the first in seeing them. You can also comment down below if you disagree with me about Adobe and let me know why. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.